in hopes of, you know, um, being catchy or relevant, right? What is some of the harm that's, that's been done? If I may call a thing a thing, um, <laughs> we have to acknowledge that the pulpit is the last bastion of black male supremacy. Um, it is primarily a way in which black men find power that is not given to them by a white supremacist world. Within that, there is an articulation of women's place that will always leave us hurting at the intersection of our identity. We're both black and we're women, but we've always got to sacrifice one, and it's usually our womanhood, in order to honor our blackness and uphold our black men. Now, I do not want to have my words mistaken that I, I despise our black men. I, that is not at all what I'm saying. We need to partner, but when you're still trying to hold on to power, and you're still trying to create a space wherein there is a power in equity, how can we do justice? So you, you're teaching women harmful ideology around their bodies. I have more women coming to me initially with the initial harm being, I was taught my sexual pleasure was a yes. sin. Mm -hmm. I was taught my body was a conduit of a man's downfall. I'm being taught all of these things that have made me hate myself. I can't even enjoy sexual pleasure because I, I have this one side of me. I want to be saved and I want to walk in a holy place and I want God to affirm me. And then I want to be respected by my church, but I also want to have an orgasm. I also want to experience the joy of sexual pleasure. And I can't do that because I have this mindset that has been put into me by the man of God that I trusted with my spiritual life. Hmm. And so when you have, again, that last bastion of power being maintained by men, they're not letting women into the pulpit who can liberate us. Yes. The ones they do let into the pulpit re-articulate the patriarchy yes. because let's be very clear, not all gatekeepers of patriarchy and supremacy are white and male, okay? So when we consider that, there's this, this, this ever-present harm that once you start oppressing one sexuality, so now I'm gonna move on to my sisters, we start competing with the gay men in our church. So now we wanna put them on the altar of sacrifice because we wanna take some of the pressure off us, so we're gonna start saying, yeah, it is a sin. That's filthy, he shouldn't be laying with that man like that. We start to gatekeep supremacy and, and patriarchy in a way to preserve ourselves, so now we're doing harm to another marginalized group. And so it just becomes this cycle of who can marginalize the next person within a group of already marginalized people? Because the, the goal here is not about transformation. The goal here is not about being renewed by the, the, the renewing of, transformed by the renewing of our minds, but it's about maintaining a power structure within another power structure. That's the greatest harm. Until you decide that it's not about the power, but about empowering, we're gonna continue to have these cycles wherein we keep doing this harm.